Freestyle Love Supreme. Pring, 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 pring. This is uh, very, very. <laughs> everything, everything I finish is gonna have an echo. Well, just preem. Or I guess it's just like uh, freestyle love supreme. Preem, preem. Um, <laughs> before in the Heights, before Hamilton, there was freestyle love supreme. Preem, preem, That's preem. where it started. Yeah. Uh, tell us about well, what's what do we what do people have to see when they when they go see the show? Um, well. <laughs> The thing about the show is that it's totally different every night. It's based on your suggestions. You make the show. You give us a verb, and then 80 minutes later, you have an entire hip hop musical show. And we started doing this in the basement of the drama bookshop in like 2003. Anthony Veneziali, who you'll see uh, later tonight. We were working on In the Heights. It was my first musical. We were working in the basement of the drama bookshop. We had no money. I was a substitute teacher. Wow. <laughs> and. We were working on Heights, and Anthony, who worked at the bookshop, would come in and distract us. He would be like, let's rap about our day. Veneziali. Veneziali. That's a great name, yeah. Anthony Veneziali. And, uh, and Chris Jackson and I were there in the basement, and he was playing Benny, and I was playing Usnavi, and we would just like freestyle. And Anthony was like, we should do this in front of people. And here we are 15 years later on Broadway! <laughs> <laughs> That's the story! <laughs> That's how you do it, right? Come on! Yeah. And and it's, uh, it's my longest running relationship. <laughs> That's bizarre, right? Yeah. Did you ever think, like, ever, like, hey, we're gonna do this on Broadway? This was just for, it was for fun. It was for fun. It was like us for fun, and we've just continued to sort of find people who are good at this, and now it's like there's like 20 members of <laughs> Freestyle of Supreme. You'll see you, some of them tonight. You did one during the blackout, right, in New York, and that was the first show. It was the night of the blackout of 2003. Some of you were not born. I am old, and <laughs> um, it was it was scheduled for the night. Basically, like the power when I was at the Pitt Theater. You know the Pitt Theater? Yeah, the pit, Back sure. when it was on 29th Street. We were rehearsing for the show the next day, and the power went out, and we were like, oh, Pit Theater. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And like, then we went out and realized the entire Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> the whole city was out, The, the yeah. city and the state and most of the Northeast Coast was, was out. And the power was coming back sort of block by block I after that, that blackout. I was kind of, I had fun with that blackout. Yeah, and we went to the... I like, know it's weird to say, uh, but I did. I, I, yeah, well, as soon as we realized it, it was okay. It was okay, and everyone was fine. We took care of each other. Yeah. We'll very take care of each other. It was another sort of New York. It was uniting. pitch black crossing the street, like holding hands, like, yeah. sorry, excuse me, sorry. Yeah, me. So we showed up at our show, and there were 16 people there, but there was still no power at the pit. And that was on 29th. We, there were 16 people in the audience. We had two cases of beer. We walked our audience with us. 11 blocks to the drama bookshop basement, which did have power. We gave everyone a beer. We rapped about everyone in the audience, and that was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were like broke Oprah's. <laughs> you, you get a beer. You get a beer. You get a beer. You get a beer. And that was the first freestyle show. Uh, this uh, back in 2004. I want to take you back to that year. Okay. Uh, you posted this on your Twitter, uh, which I love, by the way. I follow you on Twitter, and it's really fun. I follow you too. I love the those hashtags. Uh, I do love seeing all these things, but dude, I mean, the camping thing, we got to talk about some other time. Your yeah. letters from camp? I didn't like it. Oh my gosh, it's the <laughs> most funniest. Dude, but you were funny as a kid as you are now, it's the best. Uh, but this really, I flip, flip me out here. This is 2004, this is your planner. You were playing a bar mitzvah? For... Yeah, I took a picture of my, I found my, my daily planner from 2004. It says, 1230, 207th Street and 10th Avenue, Boston Bar Mitzvah, $400! Yeah. Which was like two thirds of my rent at that point. Yeah. And then it was taking me to downtown Boston to dance at a bar mitzvah at the Boston Harbor Hotel. I mean, this is crazy. This is 15 years ago. So this is a job that took the last of my dignity. Um, <laughs> How? I would get hired, you wear a black satin shirt, you wear black pants, and your job is to like encourage the kids to dance. So you're basically flirting with teenagers and old ladies being like, hey, Rachel, Shana Tova, Happy New Year, let's dance. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and it's, and it's, it was very traumatic. <laughs> yeah. well, why was this one traumatic you said to me? Like... <laughs> well, this one I remember because it had a carnival theme. And in the carnival theme, we had to put on masks and start a conga line. And nothing robs you of your humanness, like putting on a mask. So suddenly I've got this like carnival mask on and I'm congaing. And like little old ladies are pinching my butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See? Yeah. And There's, it was, just, and I was just go, like, it. this is my last time doing this for $400. <laughs> that's it, yes. It's $400. It's $400. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's on and on and on